Today I want to talk about the Fenwick tree, also sometimes called the binary index tree, and you'll see why very soon. This is one of my personal favorites because it's such a powerful data structure and it boasts efficiency and it's really, really simple to code. So let's dive right in. So things I'm going to be covering in the Fenwick tree uh, video series, just some standard stuff. So go over some motivation, why this data structure exists, analyze its time complexity, and then go into some implementation details. So in this video we'll get to the range query and in later videos uh, how to do point updates and how to construct the Fenwick tree in linear time. You can also do things like uh, range updates but I'm not going to be covering that in this series. At least not yet. Okay, so what is the motivation behind uh, the Fenwick tree? So suppose we have an array of integer values and we want to query a uh, range and find the sum of that range. Well, one thing we can do would be to uh, start at the position and scan up to where we want to stop and then sum all the individual values between that range. And that's fine, uh, we can do this. However, it'll soon get pretty slow because we're doing linear queries, which is really bad. However, if we do something like compute all the prefix sums for the array A, then we can do queries in constant time, which is really, really good. So if we set the array p at index 0 to be 0, and then we go in our array a and add that element to the current prefix sum, we get 5, and then 5 plus minus 3 give us 2, and then 6 plus 2 is 8, and so on. So this is an elementary form of uh, dynamic programming right here, calculating all the prefix sums. And then, if we want to find the sum from, say, 2 to 7 non-inclusive, then we can get the difference between uh, those two indices in the uh, P array. And that's a constant time thing, to compute the sum of the values between uh, 2 and 7 non-inclusive. So that's really great. However, there's a slight flaw in this, which is, what happens when we want to update a value in our original array A? Say, we want to update uh, index 4 to be 3. Well, now we have to recompute all the prefix sums. So this is really bad because recalculating all those prefix sums can take up to linear time. This is why the Fenwick tree was essentially created. So what is the Fenwick tree? So the Fenwick tree is a data structure that supports um, range queries on arrays and also point updates. Also range queries, but we won't be covering that in this video. So its construction is linear time, point updates are logarithmic, um, range sum queries, also logarithmic, range updates, logarithmic, but you can't say add elements to the array. You can't uh, make the array bigger or r entirely remove elements. Okay, so let's look at how we can do range queries on this thing. First thing you need to know is that unlike a regular array, a Fenwick tree, each cell is not responsible for itself, but rather for a range of other cells as well. So we're going to say that a cell is responsible for other cells depending on what the value of its least significant bit is and its binary representation. So on the left, I have a one-based array. Fenwick trees are one-based. That's very important. And I've on the side of that, I also put the binary representation of each of the numbers so you can clearly see what they look like in binary. So if we have, say, the index 12, its binary rep representation is 1100. 0, 0. 
So the least significant bit is that leftmost bit. So that is at position 3 in the binary representation. So that index is responsible for, we're going to say, 2 to the power of the position minus 1, so 4 cells below itself. Similarly, 10 has a binary representation of 1, 0, 1, 0. And the least significant bit is at position 2, so it's responsible for 2 cells below itself. And 11 uh, has the least significant bit at position 1, so it's only responsible for one cell itself. So here I've outlined uh, the least significant least significant bits, it's getting really hard to say, uh, for all the odd numbers which are just responsible for themselves. So that's what the blue bar indicates. The blue bars don't represent value. They represent range of responsibility and that's really important for you to keep in mind. So now all the cells which have a range of responsibility of 2 now the cells have a range of responsibility of 4. Notice that all these ranges of responsibilities are powers of 2. Um, 8 is responsible for 8 cells, and I guess 16 for uh, 16 cells. So now how do we do a range query on this, now that we're not really working in a standard uh, array, but rather this weird type of a range of responsibilities. And the answer is we're going to calculate the prefix sum up to a certain index and that's what's eventually going to allow us to do range queries. So let's figure out how to do prefix sums just like we did for a regular array but on this Fenwick tree. So the idea is we're going to start at some index and uh, cascade downwards until we reach zero. You'll soon see what I mean. So for example, let's find the prefix sum up to index 7. So we're calculating the prefix sum from index 1 to 7, inclusive. Now, usually everything in the Fenwick tree is inclusive. So if we look at where we are at 7, so we can get the value in the array at position 7 and then we want to cascade downwards. So the next guy below us is 6 and then 4. Notice that we're, we're like hopping down so we start 7 and then we move down to 6 and then from 6 we go down 2 levels because 6 has a range of responsibility of 2 and then we're at 4, and 4 has a range responsibility of 4, so that brings us all the way down to 0. And we're always going to be able to go from where we are all the way down to 0. So the prefix sum for 7 is the array at index 7 plus the array index 6 plus the array index 4. Alright, now to find the prefix sum for index 11, so we always start at where we are, so that's 11, and then we're going to cascade down, so the cell directly below us is 10, and 10 has a range of responsibility of 2, so we're going to go down 2, so that's 8, and then 8 brings us all the way down directly to 0. Okay, cool, and one last one, let's find the prefix sum up to index 4, so 4 we start at 4, 4 is a range of responsibility of exactly 4, so that's already, we're back down to 0, so we can stop. Okay, let's pull this all together and try to do an interval sum between i and j. So let's calculate the interval sum between, say, 11 and 15. So the idea is we're going to calculate the prefix sum of 15 and 11. So we're going to calculate the prefix sum of 15, and then we're going to calculate the prefix sum up to 11. But notice that we're not going to calculate up to 11 uh, inclusive, but exclusive, because we want the value at 11. Okay, so if we start at 15, 
then we cascade down until we hit 0. So 15 has a range of responsibility of 1, so sub sub subtract 1 from 15, and then we get to 14. And 14 has a range of responsibility of 2, because the least significant bit on 14 is 2. Okay, now we go to 12, and then keep cascading down. So the prefix sum for 15 is 15, the array at index 15 plus the array at 14 plus 12 plus 8. All right, now the prefix sum for up to 11 non-inclusive, so we're going to start at 10. Then we want to cascade down until we hit 0. So 10 has a range of responsibility of 2, so subtract 2 from 10. We get to 8. Now from 8 has a range of responsibility of 8, so cascade down. So 8 minus 8, 0. So now the range sum is the sum of all the indices of 15 minus those uh, of uh, 10. And that's how we would calculate the range sum. Um, so notice that in the worst case, we're qu querying a cell which has a binary representation, which is all ones. And these are the numbers of the form, like 2 to the n minus 1. So a power of 2 a minus 1. So a power of 2 um, has a uh, one bit set and all zeros, but when you subtract 1, then you get a whole bunch of 1s. So if you look at like 15, almost all of its bits are 1s, and those are the worst cases. So in the worst case, we might be asked to query, say, um, 15 and 7, both of which have a lot of 1s in them. So we're doing about two log base 2 of n operations. But in the average case, this is actually pretty good. And we're going to implement this in such a way that it's just going to be uh, bit manipulation. So this is like super fast. So the range query algorithm is pretty much this. You see it's like literally no code. The range query from i to j, if we have a Fenwick tree of size n. So I'm going to define a function called prefix sum, which does that cascade, uh, cascading down uh, operation. So we start at i, and while i is not equal to 0, we're going to sum up the uh, values in our Fenwick tree, and we're going to remove the value of the least significant bit. And we're all we're going to keep doing this until our value is zero and then we can return the sum. So the range query then is just a difference between those prefix sums. So really neat little uh, algorithm. Alright, thanks for watching this guys. Uh, and in the next video we're going to be doing point updates on a Fenwick tree. So stay tuned for that. It's actually super cool and it works in just the opposite way. So it's almost the same algorithm. And if you want some source code for the Fenwick tree, make sure to check out the GitHub repository uh, below. It should also be in the description. Guys, thanks for watching. Hit the like button and I will catch you in the next video.